Dr. V here with my service dog Hestia and my new service dog in training Alice. Today I'm going to be talking with you about sizes of service dogs because as a disabled person I need to figure out what size dog can do the things that I need to help with my disability. So I've had three different sizes of service dogs over my service dog journey. I started with a medium dog, went to large, and now I use small. So I started off with a medium sized dog, an 18 inch at the shoulder Weimariner Pitbull mix named Sabrina. And she was a great size for fitting in restaurants and underneath airplane seats. And then she was large enough that I didn't have to worry about people injuring her by running into her or accidentally kicking her or anything like that. And at home, she was a great size for pressure therapy. However, there were two main problems. When we went out, she was too big to sit in my lap at restaurants or in class, so I couldn't get the pressure therapy I needed. And when we were walking along, she was too short for me to touch her and get the tactile stimulation I needed when I was in stressful situations. So I went with a large dog for my second service dog, a 28 inch at the shoulder standard poodle named Ollie. Ollie was a perfect size for tactile stimulation while walking. I could just reach my hand down and pet his head and it was great but I found that he was really too big to fit underneath airline seats comfortably and also sometimes had a problem in restaurants. So size really was a little bit of an issue. I did find, however, that the best way he could provide me pressure therapy was by standing in front of me and putting his head in my lap and providing pressure therapy that way when I was seated in restaurants and in classrooms. So I figured, why not try a dog as big as Ollie's head? So to make sure this would work for me, I started carrying around and placing on me when I was having anxiety attacks, bags of flour, canned goods, and bags of clothing of various weights to see how much weight I really needed for me for a service dog to provide pressure therapy. For me, I only needed about five pounds. So I realized I could go with a small dog and I went with a nine pound Japanese chin named Hestia. She's very easy to fit in restaurants and on airplanes. And also, while I can't touch her when she's on the floor, if I need tactile stimulation while I'm walking, I can just pick her up and carry her. More importantly, if I need pressure therapy when I'm out and about, I can put her in a sling, a baby carrier across my chest, and she can provide pressure therapy to me as I walk around, which is really helpful in the grocery store. The one drawback of a small service dog for me is that people don't take her as seriously as they do a large breed service dog. So they might give us a little bit more of a hassle going in places or, or be more inclined to think we're faking it, but it hasn't really been too big of an issue. So this has been what works for me for my service dog needs. Every person with a disability has different needs related to their disability. So you need to figure out what's going to work best for you. I hope this video has helped you think about sizes of service dogs and what might be best in your situation. Thanks for watching.